During the times of COVID, it's very, very important to understand that our hospital infrastructure is suffering from shortage of medical supplies, shortage of oxygen. So we, be, we need to understand what is a difference actually between a medical oxygen versus the industrial grade oxygen that is available and how these are generated, what are the specific uses that are there. So coming on to the very first understanding of the difference between the two, we understand that medical oxygen is prepared through through the pr uh, purification and separation process under the ASUs or the air separation units which we would come in a while but the idea is this medical oxygen is highly pure there is no contamination that is present however we do not have such stringent restrictions with industrial oxygen industrial oxygen is primarily used for combustion process for the process of oxidation uh, chemical reactions and cutting processes but the requirement of purity is not that stringent as the medical oxygen under the medical oxygen, we have the purity guidelines and specifications that are laid down. Any container which was previously used for industrial grade ox oxygen, for example, if it has to be used for a medical oxygen purpose, it has to be properly cleaned, evacuated, labeled and sealed. So that is the basic difference and this medical oxygen is used where definitely with the times of corona and respiratory issues we have uh, medical oxygen being used for respiratory purpose it is also used for cardiac uh, issues also used for hemorrhage and in many more uh, uh, circumstances that we would understand in a while coming on to a broad outline about how this process actually occurs for uh, separation of oxygen so if we talk about the air around us that we breathe it is nearly 78 percent nitrogen nearly 21 percent is oxygen and the remaining one percent constitute constitutes argon and carbon dioxide water vapor and trace gases now this 21 percent that is present in the atmosphere around us is sufficient for us to breathe but when it comes to the medical illnesses we require pure oxygen and how do we actually obtain this pure oxygen is interesting. So what happens is there are air separation units. Now oxygen since it comprises 21% of the gas in the atmosphere it is one of the primarily un primary units that is there. So separation and distillation becomes important. So under the air separation units what happens is each of the element that is present in the air is separated. So nitrogen separated into a separate unit, oxygen into a separate unit, argon into a separate unit and so on and so forth. Now, through the several processes of the separation that goes and distillation that goes, we obtain oxygen. Now, this oxygen is also obtained through the cryogenic process and we believe that the medical oxygen has nearly 99% purity that means it is 99% pure oxygen that is being uh, obtained also this medical oxygen is considered as a drug or a pharmaceutical product in medical terminology so it is equivalent to any medicine that is being consumed so we understand that medical oxygen is very very different from the industrial oxygen the process of separation is very very important and it is assured that during this process of separation no contamination remains and this process of separation in itself is a viable solution and we do not re require any further processing if there has been no contamination. So as we said where it is used, so definitely uh, we very well know during the times of COVID respiratory diseases have increased, the issues related to respiratory uh, diseases have increased and therefore uh, medical oxygen is used with respiratory ailments with cardiac issues when there is poisoning because of carbon monoxide very very important there can be issues of hemorrhage medical oxygen is also available in ambulance in hospitals dispensaries and it is an essential part in a critical accident response system where oxygen requirement can be uh, emergency also if any procedure requires general anesthesia that has to be administered medical oxygen becomes important now how is this medical oxygen delivered to a individual patient there are primarily three ways through
through which medical oxygen is delivered. Firstly, the liquid oxygen is pre uh, prepared at the site and through the cryogenic tanks, these, uh, is reached, uh, this liquid oxygen reaches the hospitals through the internal pipeline. So the whole of the hospital would have the pipeline and the infrastructure for the same and that is how medical oxygen reaches. The next way through which we say medical oxygen reaches is through the cylinders. Now cylinders once the oxygen is consumed they are sent for refilling similar to the LPG gas cylinders that we use. The third most important development that we have witnessed recently is PSA which is the pressure swing adsorption oxygen concentration concentrators or we could say oxygen generators so what happens is these are the machines that have been introduced of late in 1970s and have been widely in circulation in parts of north america in parts of europe parts of africa and asia the idea is the oxygen is produced on site so there is no requirement for storage as and when required, the oxygen is produced on site. So the PSA oxygen concentrators or generators are a recent development. They are highly portable. They can be uh, utilized to their best capacity and whenever there is a requirement, the oxygen can be generated. So this is one of the major things that we have seen as a major invention in terms of medical oxygen, the PSA, which is the pressure swing adsorption. Uh, oxygen concentrators. The next is let's talk about certain misconceptions that we commonly hear about oxygen. So my first question is do you breathe 100% oxygen? Definitely no this is a misconception because in the composition of air it is only 21% oxygen. So the air we breathe has just 21% oxygen. The second misconception that commonly we hear about is the sea drivers that are there, the firefighters that are there, do they require 100% pure oxygen? Again the answer is no. They do not require 100% pure oxygen. 100% pure oxygen is used only in the case of of medical oxygen. However, in case of athletes uh, who are being given high altitude training uh, are given medical oxygen. Now, uh, when it comes to athlete, when we talk about the use of medical oxygen in sports and uh, sports training, it becomes a totally separate issue. However, just to have an introduction about it, the idea is there are sometimes simulation uh, models that are being developed. So oxygen tents are being developed. The concept is sometimes it's not possible to send the players directly to high altitude always. So a dummy atmosphere is created or a simulation simulated atmosphere is cre created which is called as oxygen tents and the players are asked to remain in that region for nearly one month or so and then the impact is seen with increased uh, RBC. Now what happens is as you travel high there is less of oxygen that is present. Now because of the lack of oxygen that is there, the heart rate starts to increase. You are trying to pump more blood and therefore if you go on to higher altitudes, you would usually see people with red cheeks and that's one of the primary reasons for the same. So uh, athletes definitely require med medical oxygen as a part of training and also as a part of high altitude uh, sickness that could be uh, require that could require treatment in certain cases so that was about the importance of medical oxygen how it is classified as a drug and a pharmaceutical product so stay safe stay home and avoid unnecessary public meetings we would be covering many more interesting topics related to covid stay safe have a wonderful day ahead